Yes, students. Now we are heading on towards the next topic. Already I have finished the relative velocity. So, if you have not completed the worksheet that I have given, you have to leave some pages so that you can complete those numericals. In the Zoom class, also I can little more clarify some of the questions. So now we are going to do, do the rectangular components of vectors. So what is the rectangular component of vectors? Already I have told this one earlier. I have once again, I will once again explain this one so that it will be easy for us to as we go ahead. So if there is a one vector is there, vector A, the process of splitting this vector into two components which is right angles to each other, that is called rectangular component of vector. So if you have a vector, you can split this vector into two components. So you can do in this way, that is called AX, and do in this way, that is called AY. It can also be called as resolution of vectors. Resolution of vectors. So what is resolution of vectors? It is the process of resolving this one into two components. So we no more say this way, we will only say these two things. Now, if you have an angle theta here and keep this as an uh, perpendicular, so if it is perpendicular here, there is an angle, so what will be this one? This one, if this is O, this is P, and this is Q, you will already know what is cos theta is equal to, equal to. What is cos theta? Cos theta is going to be equal to it is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So, OP upon OQ, which is equal to, so OP is going to be, what is, what is OP is equal to? OQ cos theta. These are all things very simple. We know this one already. What is OQ? A cos theta, that is OP. This is a simple one. Similarly, what is sin theta? sin theta is going to be equal to perpendicular QP upon OQ. So it is QP upon OQ. So what is QP is going to be equal to OQ sin theta. So that is going to be equal to A sin theta. That is going to be QP. We know these two things. Now let us put this one in the diagram here. What is OP here? This part OP is called A cos theta this part is going to be called as a sin theta. So in the rectangular components what we do is whenever we take this as a component here a vector we can say either ax and ay now ax and ay has it is not it is just a representation ax and ay is just a representation what actually it has become is this part of it the lower part of it it has become a cos theta and the top part of it, the perpendicular part of it, it has become a sin theta. We already saw this one. What is OP? This side is going to be equal to a cos theta. What is the perpendicular? Perpendicular. This is going to be equal to a sin theta. So, no more we can say this as a. Now, a is now it is equal to a sin theta and a cos theta. If you want to determine the um, value here, so you can say a is going to be equal to under root of ax square plus ay square. So that's going to be equal to a cos square cos theta the whole square plus a sin theta the whole square under root. So if you do this one, it is a square. A can be common out. Yeah, a square can be common out. Say a and sin square theta plus cos square theta that we know already so it will become equal to a itself so this a is actually a itself now how can you say sir you are putting a cos theta and a sin theta how can these two could be equal to a itself now that's what the proof is when you combine a cos theta and when you combine a sin theta together and you put the trying to find out these two together and what is the resultant how do you find the resultant? a is equal to ax square plus ay square. This is the way resultant is found out. So you put this value, you put this value, finally what you will get here. 
so that if you find out this is a resultant there is a resultant is this one the resultant finally you get here is a itself so this is the resultant so the process of splitting a into two components is called resolution of vectors it's called resolution of vectors now if you want to combine these two vectors a cos theta and a sin theta combine to these two vectors you will see definitely you will get this one as a itself now you would find out sir what is the example give some examples for this one let me give some examples here so force is there's a block here you give a force f here now the body anyhow is going to go in this direction the body has to go to this direction only now you are giving theta is a force now which force component helps in horizontal motion i am again repeating my words what is the component of the force helps in moving in horizontal direction so now resolve into two components this one is going to be equal to f cos theta already we saw this one f cos theta and what is this one this is going to be equal to f sin theta so which will be moving in this direction f cos theta component only will help it moving in this direction because we have resolved this one into two components now into f cos theta horizontal component and f sin theta vertical component so always we need to take an angled vector into two components that will be always easy in entire of physics what we do is whenever there is a force with an angle here we will drop this force in an angle and make it into a horizontal component and vertical component so let us take one more example here um for example a body is shot you are throwing a ball in this direction and the ball goes and falls down so you are throwing a ball with a velocity v here and you are throwing in this angle here now this body is going in this direction anyhow anyhow it is gone here it is gone taken a trajectory but it is gone here what is the velocity it is enabling it to go in this direction that is going to be called as so determine here if this v is a velocity here so it's going to be v cos theta it is a horizontal velocity what is the vertical velocity it goes up and again comes down what is the vertical velocity that is going to be called as v sin theta so this velocity now no more we are going to calculate we are going to calculate either in terms of vertical component velocity or horizontal component velocity as v cos theta so resolution of vectors it helps us quite a lot in many other calculations all right so this is what basic resolution of vectors we will try to find out more things in the days to come how it helps us now we'll move ahead to the next very very important part which is given in page number 197 157 it is called multiplication of two vectors what is multiplication of two vectors so we'll try to understand the multiplication process there are two uh, multiplication of vectors is possible now whenever you do multiplication of vectors now what you do is in the book write this topic as a very big topic because you will miss this topic because it will be between most of the numericals you have just finished relative velocity numericals and it's a short theory portion comes and again numerical it's going to start so multiplication of vectors you write very big multiplication of vectors right very big and keep you will not miss out this particular things now before going to multiplication of vectors let me tell you vector itself it has two things i we have already been discussing here it has a scalar component and it has a direction component which is called magnitude and direction so whenever you are multiplying two vectors then you are 
definitely remember you are going to multiply two things magnitude and direction also you are going to multiply the magnitude you are going to multiply the direction also so the multiplication becomes little more complicated because vector within vector itself it has magnitude and direction because of this two component which is there multiplication itself of the vectors has been broadly classified into two major divisions because vector itself has magnitude and direction so if there is a uh, two vectors here a vector and b vector and we multiply a and b we multiply a and b is multiplied and you get an answer multiply a and b and the answer if you get in a scalar if you get an answer in a scalar then that multiplication of a and b vector for getting a scalar answer it is called as scalar product similarly a and b you multiply and you get an answer which is a vector so it is called as vector product so there are two multiplication process is possible scalar product or vector product so when two vectors are multiplied this is also vector this is also vector both of them has a magnitude and direction magnitude and direction but the answer you will get a pure scalar you will get then that is called a scalar product a and b gives a scalar scalar answer the answer is scalar that is called scalar product now here there is a vector this is also a vector multiply these two things but you will get an answer as a pure vector you will get which has magnitude and which has direction then there is called vector product here you will not have any direction you will have only magnitude as an answer so that's a big difference in these two products scalar product and vector product in scalar product answer will be only magnitude in vector product answer will have magnitude and direction so we're going to see first of all just scalar product today and tomorrow we'll see the next class we'll be seeing vector product so we are going to see what is scalar product when you do when you multiply two things how the scalar product works and how you will get just a magnitude we are going to see this right now so scalar product is also called as dot product of two vectors so you can write this as scalar product very big in your notebook highly possible to get disappeared in your register itself it will be just one page or one and a half page you can get missed out this one scalar product scalar product it is also called as a dot product we call this dot product so what is scalar product when you multiply two vectors a vector and b vector you will get a scalar answer 1d magnitude will be the answer okay the scalar product of two vectors is defined as the scalar quantity equal to the product of their magnitudes and cosine angle between them so the scalar quantity equal to now what is a it is defined as a scalar quantity the so finally you will get a scalar quantity that scalar quantity is equal to product of the magnitude of the two vectors and the cosine angle between them let me just give you an explanation how it goes so if you have a vector here and b vector here having an angle here so the product of these two a vector and b vector can be told as a dot b and this product is a scalar product it is equal to the definition says it is the magnitude of a that means magnitude of a and magnitude of b and 
the cosine of angle between them it is cos theta three things which is add, multiplied here a magnitude b magnitude and cos theta is being multiplied so in other ways we can write this as just a b cos theta also you can write this is the way in which usually it has been represented so you can write, write here as if theta is the angle between a and b then a dot b is equal to a b cos theta this is the diagram which has been drawn this is the diagram which has been drawn so a vector b vector is here a vector is here so let me draw the same diagram once again you can draw this diagram for yourself so this is a vector I can make it a little more long -weighted. and this is b vector this is theta now if you look at this one b vector is definitely is much much longer and a vector is smaller here doesn't matter but these two are getting multiplied so when you multiply make drop and perpendicular here if this is b vector what will be from here to here this is o this is p so this is going to be q let this part will be n what is o n with respect to this o p vector this is going to be b cos theta because this is the perpendicular uh, horizontal one for this particular o p vector that is b vector b cos theta and there is already another vector which is already there in the top of it itself that is going to be a vector which is going till q o q and o n now it is also told as what is dot product is also told as a vector dot b vector is equal to the product of the product of two things in the same direction what are the two things with the same direction one is a vector okay a vector that is the magnitude of a vector and the horizontal component of b vector what is the horizontal component of b vector that is b cos theta these two multiplied together it is called as a dot product a vector which is there in this direction and in the same direction what b component will come the b component will have the value in the horizontal direction it is b cos theta that b cos theta and a you multiply together that is called a dot b so it almost goes to the same part of it itself so a times of b cos theta if you write read in this words the words we will read here now b cos theta is a component vector b vector in the direction of a is it right b cos theta is in the direction of a hence scalar comp product of two vectors is equal to we can also say this one this another definition is equal to scalar product of two vectors is equal to product of magnitude of one vector what is the magnitude of one vector that is a vector and the component of second vector in the direction of the first vector component of second vector what is the component of second vector this component of b vector in the direction of a vector that is b cos theta these two multiplied that is also called as a scalar product so that is the way it is there are a few examples given here i will just mention the example also here so example number 1 we know we have already seen this example very clearly we have done it on in the lower classes so maybe in 10th or 9th you all have done when there is a block of block is there and we have studied the work done formula work done what is work done is going to be equal to force into displacement we already know this one now work done is of three varieties when theta is equal to 0 degrees when theta is equal to 90 degrees and when theta is going to be going to be any angle here let us take any angle here this force is given in this direction not in the direction of the displacement it is going to be finally displaced here so this is going to be the displacement here but there is an angle here force is given an angle here whenever we take this work done formula we always take not this component of the, the not the original force we don't take the original force we take the force acting along the displacement what is the force acting along the displacement just now we saw 
force has a two components force can be of the horizontal component and the vertical component what is the horizontal component f cos theta what is the vertical component which is going to be equal to f sin theta so always the force which is responsible or moving this one to the one place to another is only f cos theta not f so f cos theta is a reduced value when you do a cos theta value it is a reduced value it is not as effective as the same f maybe it is 50 newtons this will be less than 50 newtons because cos theta component is multiplied here cos theta is a fraction when you multiply a fraction with a force you will get it less so work done is going to be equal to displacement and the component of force along this direction of displacement that is f cos theta so it is called as f s cos theta that is w we just now we saw a dot b is equal to a b cos theta we just now we saw this one a b cos theta f s cos theta if f s cos theta is the same way which is representing a b cos theta what can be right here as w is going to be equal to f vector dot s vector it is a dot product so the answer which you get force into displacement force is a vector quantity this is a vector displacement what is that one vector what is the answer you will get the answer you will get as is scalar what is scalar work done is always scalar work done work is not a vector quantity it doesn't have a direction work is always a scalar quantity so vector into vector you get a scalar that is called a scalar product so you would be wondering why did I be studying this one now in physics right here itself you are able to understand two vector multiplied you get a scalar answer that is called scalar product so we call this a dot product which comes straight away in this one and we have three answers here theta is equal to 0 degrees theta is equal to 90 degrees and any angle theta here 180 degrees all these things we can make it for this value but the basic thing is two vectors multiplied and you get a scalar answer that is called work done example so it is right here in the book itself in the book itself suppose force is making an angle here so force cos theta and displacement and the body moves to the next direction here so it is right here so force is equal to f cos uh, f cos theta into s f s cos theta so f dot s is equal to f s cos theta so w is equal to f dot s f vector dot s vector so that's the way it is been uh, determined we'll go to the next page now so we are seeing in page number 158 example number 2 we already know force w is going to be equal to f dot s we already know this one there is the work done we can also see the power formula what is power is going to be equal to power equal to f dot v vector force and velocity when you multiply you will get power and remember force is a vector quantity and velocity also it is a vector quantity what is power it is a scalar quantity now how did we come to this one you can take this one itself w itself so w is equal to be equal to force into displacement now rate of doing work is power differentiate this one differentiate this particular quantity dw upon dt rate of doing work so force into ds by dt so that is displacement also goes in the time of period of time force doesn't change force is constant all the time so it since it's a constant it is we are not putting df upon dt we are not putting because it is constant throughout but displacement changes it is not constant it keeps on varying with respect to time so dw upon dt the rate of doing work is power force is the same constant force the displacement with respect to time is v so you get here force in the dot product of velocity it gives power that is the second example we can say third example example number three you will also study in next year magnetic flux that is called phi so magnetic flux phi it is given here as b 
is magnetic flux and A is an area vector. Area also has a vector quantity. So it is going to be equal to B dot A. This one we will be studying much in the next year. Magnetic flux is equal to be equal to magnetic vector and area vector. Magnetic field and the area vector is called magnetic flux. So three examples we have seen with respect to two vectors multiplied and you get a scalar answer. And this, all the scalars are used in physics. So that's why we have determined the three examples here. So we will go ahead to the, some of the examples here. The, not examples, the properties. Properties of scalar product. What is the properties? The first property is the scalar product is commutative. What is commutative means? A dot B equal to B dot A. So you can write the uh, properties one by one. Just you can do this determine and write one by one. That's enough. So first one is scalar product is is commutative. What is commutative means? A dot B will be equal to B dot A. So that is the first property. Second property. That is, it is a little more given explanation. I am not going to the explanation now. Scalar product is distributive. What is distributive means? A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B and A dot C. That is called distributive. So A dot B plus A dot C. So please write this one. Scalar product is distributive. The second property. A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. There is a proof given here totally. How does we explain? We need not go into the proof. Third property. Property number 3. Go down in the book itself. You will see the property number 3. Scalar product of two mutually perpendicular vectors is 0. Very very important. Scalar product of two mutually perpendicular vectors is 0. How it is? So if this is A vector. And this is B vector. And it is 90 degrees. I do a scalar product of both of them. So A and B. A dot B I will do. That is going to be equal to A B cos 90. It is mutually, mutually perpendicular. What is cos 90? It is 0. So A dot B you will get 0 here. The proof of two vectors to be perpendicular to each other. That means the dot product you should get 0. I am putting it in a reverse condition. I am just putting the statement in the reverse condition. At the proof of two vectors to be mutually perpendicular. If you wanted to say yes A is perpendicular to B. Then do the dot product of these two. You will find out the answer is 0. Mean then definitely it is perpendicular. The answer is that angle is going to be equal to 90 degrees. That is what it is. So write down the scalar product of two mutually perpendicular vectors is going to be equal to 0. So write this same part of it and then you will be able to get this a little highlight of what it is. The fourth part of it. Now we are going to see, we have seen the second one and we are going to see the third one also. This is the third one. Second one is distributive. Third one is 90 degrees. The fourth one is the scalar product of two parallel vectors. The scalar product of two parallel vectors is equal to the product of their own magnitude. So, scalar product of two parallel vectors. Now, here we saw scalar product of perpendicular vectors. Perpendicular vectors. Now, the next one is parallel vectors. That is what the fourth rule says parallel vectors if you multiply a vector and b vector both of them are parallel to each other this is a vector this is b vector when they are parallel what is the angle it is going to be equal to 0 angle is 0 so it is going to be equal to a b cos 0 what is cos 0 the answer is 1 so what will be the final answer here a vector dot b vector is going to be equal to just a b a into B, the magnitude and the magnitude both multiply. Then if you don't get an angle here, then that is going to be the parallel vector getting multiplied. So that's what it is. 
the scalar product of two parallel vectors scalar product of two parallel vectors is a product of the magnitudes it is the product of magnitudes it is just magnitude product is just to say that is the value here so it is already given here fifth part part number five the scalar product of vector with itself is equal to the square of the magnitude of the vector so can you write this one write down in the note topic in, in this uh, point fifth point in the register the scalar product of a vector with itself now what is we mean by with, with itself let me explain to you scalar product of a vector itself so this is a vector now a vector you multiply with a vector once again another a vector which is put it here itself into a vector itself square this a the scalar product of a with its own vector itself are we having another new vector no we are trying to just multiply a into a together a scalar product of vector with itself a dot a is equal to square of the magnitude that means this is a vector and you wanted to multiply the same thing with another one same in the same way itself that means what is the angle theta it is zero degrees because it goes to the same thing of parallel so it is a into a cos zero what is cos zero it is one so it is going to be called as a square so a dot a is going to be equal to a square that's what it is it is equal to square of the magnitude of the vector it is going to be called as an a square here square of the magnitude of the vector so a and a by a dot a is equal to a into a cos zero is a square so that is the basic thing which is there now usually they try to make it little more elaborate try to know this one it will be quite helpful if r is equal to a plus b r is going to be equal to a plus b this is a resultant this resultant you wanted to again multiply with once again two times you wanted to multiply r and r that is going to be equal to r dot r vector what will happen it is two you are multiplying together of course you will get r square that is going to be the answer that is going to be a scalar square we will get but you got these two things to be multiplied that is a plus b again dot product of once again a plus b so two things it has to be multiplied now there are two sides of it r and r the product of two vectors within itself is going to be equal to r square that's what it is here r vector is equal to a plus b and you want to do self product of both sides so r dot r is equal to a plus b dot product of a plus b once you do this one a will become a dot a and again a dot b and b is going to be b dot a and b dot b so a dot a is going to be equal to here like this and b dot b now then two times of a dot b because a dot b and b dot a is there this could be combined together as two times of a dot b which is going to be equal to r square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta this is the main formula you will get or r is equal to equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta you will get in terms of under root here so that is also a possibility of the extension of this one <coughs> two product whenever it is there it could be extended to r and r putting together you get a scalar again here r square is a scalar here which could be multiplied in this way the last example is the property is the sixth property the scalar product of unit vector orthogonal vectors i dot j i cap j cap k cap have the following relationship scalar product of unit orthogonal vectors what is unit orthogonal vectors it is we already saw this one now there are this is x axis this is y axis this is z axis we always say unit vector maybe you would have forgotten what is unit vector is unit vector is if it is a vector is the vector which is here this could be split into two components here magnitude and direction the direction is a cap we can say this is called unit vector a 
as same vector can be always split into magnitude and direction to mention the direction we see a unit vector so what is unit vector what is the magnitude of a unit vector it is only one as a magnitude and what is the direction direction is same as that of this vector so a vector is equal to a cap into a magnitude and direction that is a cap we can split a cap into two comp a vector into two component two ways which is the product of magnitude and direction the direction is shown as a cap that is called unit vector so what is a cap is going to be equal to a vector upon so this has been brought down this is also a unit vector so again unit vector is magnitude wise it is just one magnitude you will get direction wise same as that of this vector so it is a vector quantity which has a direction which direction is same as that of the a vector it just shows direction a vector will just shows direction it doesn't have any other value to do it it just shows direction <coughs> so keeping x y z as a thing you might have several magnitude you might have this is a 50 newtons you can say this is going to be 100 newtons you can say you can say many magnitude you can go on to say in the x axis or y axis you can plot the magnitude but when it comes to the unit vector this side x axis always called as an i cap it is a basic representation what is i cap it is unit vector it has one the magnitude is 1 what is the direction i cap direction is always along x axis similarly y vector will have j cap what is the magnitude only one what is the direction along y axis similarly z axis it is k cap what is the magnitude one direction along z axis wherever you see i cap x axis is the default mind you should have i cap it represents x axis j cap it represents y axis and k cap represents z axis it is just representation of direction alone remember direction alone now we will go ahead to orthogonal vectors here what did we see here the scalar product of unit orthogonal vectors i cap x axis mein j cap it is in y axis k cap z axis have the following relationship if i dot j is being multiplied what is i dot j now we need to we have already seen this part of it when i dot j is multiplied where is i it is in i x axis what is j it is in y axis it is 90 degrees here i dot j so i dot j so it's going to be equal to 1 is a magnitude another is also 1 is a magnitude cos 90 90 degrees what is cos 90 it is going to be equal to 0 so it is 0 i dot j if you multiply you will get 0 similarly j dot k if you look at this angle also it is also 90 degrees j dot k j dot k if you multiply 1 into 1 into cos 90 is 0 k dot i what is k dot i this relationship you get here k and i 90 degrees is the angle again 0 k dot i is equal to 0 but here i into i vector what will happen if i vector is there you multiply with i vector itself what will happen i dot i vector we already saw this one two vectors multiplied within itself that's going to be equal to 1 because 1 into 1 into cos 0 is going to be equal to 1 itself j dot j is going to be equal to 1 k dot k is also going to be equal to 1 so multiplying i and i together will get 1 j and j 1 k and k 1 but i and j is 0 j and k is 0 k and i is 0 that's what it is there are two things which is given here i cap j cap and k cap so you get here as a magnitude how it came it is already written here i dot j 1 into 1 into cos 90 that's what 1 into 1 into cos 90 i said here it is 0 so similarly j and k is 0 i and k is k and i also is equal to 0 
but i into i 1 into 1 into cos 0 1 into 1 into cos 0 you get here is 1 and similarly it is 0 all right so now last part last property the scalar product of two vectors is equal to the sum of the product of their corresponding z component so scalar component of two vectors is equal to sum of product of their corresponding x y and z components so how it is represented it is again the last property the last property is a vector if it is there it is represented in this way you have to have the sum of the product of the magnitude and direction so if you wanted to determine so this is i cap j cap k cap suppose you have an a vector which has been represented this a vector which is always represented in terms of i j and k it is going to be equal to a x of i cap plus a y of j cap plus a z of k cap we will represent a vector which is here in this axis into three components of i j and k similarly if you have another vector of b vector also here in this direction this is b vector in this direction here similarly b vector also could be b x i cap plus b y j cap plus b z k cap you can write look at this one how that's what it's the way it's represented a x i cap a y j cap and a z j k cap b is also equal to b x b y and b z these two could be taken as a dot product and you will get the answer i'll do an example in this one you will understand clearly so let us do a numerical you will little understand with that i will close so example number 40 it has two vectors a vector is equal to 3 i cap plus 4 j cap i already we saw i cap means x axis j cap means y axis so it is a is now it is in two components here b vector is equal to 12 i cap minus 5 j cap to determine the magnitude of a and the value of a dot b so the product is coming here how to do this one so first of all write down a vector is going to be equal to 3 i cap plus 4 j cap and b vector also please write down 12 i cap minus 5 j cap so this is the two vectors magnitude how we want to find out is you can find out the magnitude by just doing the magnitude of 3 square plus 4 square it is going to be equal to 9 plus 16 25 5 if you want to do this one also 12 square plus 5 square 144 plus 25 so you get here as 169 under root so that's going to be the value which you will get it is going to be equal to 13 you can easily find out the magnitude magnitude is always has to be found out like this so magnitude of a we already found out here now next one is a dot b you need to find out how to find out a dot b so we'll go here to find out a dot b a dot b is going to be equal to 3 i cap plus 4 j cap dot product of 12 i cap minus 5 j cap it is just a dot product of both of them now multiply i and i vector first of all 3 and 12 one is you multiply 3 and 12 it is going to be equal to 36 i dot i next one is multiply these two minus 15 i dot j i and j is multiplied next one is these two multiply it is going to be equal to 48 j dot i and then multiply this to minus 20 j dot j remember i dot i j i dot j will be 0 because 
i dot j is it's always it's zero perpendicular to this one unit vector perpendicular to this one you get zero we already saw this one earlier j dot i also will become zero what is i dot i this is one what is j dot j is going to be equal to one so you can have the value as this is only 36 0 and 0 minus 20 because it is already 0 it is already 1 so the answer is 16 now finally what happens is in general term whenever you multiply two vectors you need not write this itself because it is already having i dot j j dot i it definitely is going to become 0 you see itself j and i you can say it is 0 because it is x axis and y axis x axis is here y is here multiplied by 90 degrees when any two perpendicular vectors you multiply you will get 0 so it's going to be equal to only 16 that's a basic thing you need to understand here whenever you do this one more question we'll do so this is the question you got here answer is 16 and you got here the magnitude is 5 another question i will do so there are two components here Question number 43. Find a vector. No, no, it is not. I am not going to do 43. It is not the actual thing. Question number 36. If a vector is going to be equal to minus 2i cap plus 3j cap minus k cap and b vector is equal to 3i cap plus 6j cap plus 2k cap, then determine the angle between a and b. So we are asked to find out the angle between a and b. It is clearly, you can easily do it through a dot product, this whole thing. So write down 2i cap plus 2j cap minus k cap and b vector is going to be equal to 3i cap plus 6j cap plus 2k cap these are the two things which is already given here so a dot b will give it as a b cos theta now find the angle it is asked determine the angle between them cos theta is going to be equal to a dot b upon a and b what is this a this is magnitude of a magnitude of b so these two are magnitudes this is dot product this is magnitude of a b magnitude of a separately you need to find out magnitude of a magnitude of b and dot product and then put all things together so we'll go one by one magnitude of a how to find out the magnitude of a so magnitude of a is going to be equal to a vector is here so it's going to be equal to under root of 2 2 and 1 2 square plus 2 square plus 1 square what is magnitude it is going to be equal to 4 plus 4 plus 1 9 you will get here as 3 is the answer magnitude of b this one we'll try to find out here so b is going to be equal to 3 square plus 6 square plus 2 square under root that's what 3 square 6 square and this one 9 plus 36 plus 4 it is 49 under root 7 is the answer that's a b is the answer is 7 that is a you got a we got b these two we got a and b we got dot product we need to find out how to find out the dot product similarly these two dot product a dot b is going to be equal to only multiply i and i i and i i and j i and k you can multiply but i and i only you will get an answer minus 2 and 3 minus 2 into 3 only you will get an answer i and j you will get 0 i and k also will get 0 so you need not go to multiply this one then next one is j and j you will get here plus 2 into 6 j and i will get 0 j and k also will get 0 you need not do that then k and k only you can multiply 1 and 2 k 
kn i and kn j will get 0. So you get here minus 6 plus 12 minus 2. So what's the answer here? That's going to be equal to 4 is the answer. a dot b is going to be equal to 4. Now you got three answers here. a dot b, magnitude of a, magnitude of b. Put in this value here. So cos theta is going to be equal to a dot b and upon a and b a dot b is 4 this is 3 and this is 7 so it is going to be equal to 4 by 21 is cos theta what is 4 by 21 that is going to be equal to 0 0.19 0 0.19 you calculate through the log table when you calculate through the log table you get an answer now cos theta is going to be equal to a dot b a b you get this answer so this is the uh, critical answer. You can just go through this once again, go through the video once again, you will be able to understand how to do this one to find out the cos theta value. So there are few numericals I would request you to try in the back of this exercise. So at the back exercise I will give few numericals. Though it takes a little more longer time, you need to spend at least two hours in physics every day. Don't say it is a long and big homework you are giving. You need to spend two hours every day in physics. So, look at question number 12. 12th question. A vector is given here. B vector is given here. Then find magnitude of A. You can find out the magnitude of A under root of 3 square plus 2 square. Magnitude of B, you can find out. A plus B, just add both of them. 3 and 1. 2 and 2. And then 3 and there is nothing 0. You add here. Multiply here. And then a dot b. All the a dot b is there. A cross b you don't do it. Okay. These, thing, these things you can try and to do it. Similarly, sum and difference of two vectors. A vector and b vector. How to find that sum and the difference. So, if you want to add any of the two vectors. How to find out the addition of this one. It is simple. If it is. Okay. Sum and the difference is given here. Find the value here. So, you need to find out a plus b and a minus b magnitude magnitude is given here a plus b magnitude you can find out the magnitude here a minus b magnitude is given here and how to find out the magnitude of a separately magnitude of b separately and then a dot b uh, i don't think you'll be able to do this one we can try a little later but this one you can definitely try dot product of two things j and this much and this is the dot product and then dot product you can definitely try this question number 14 and question number 12 without this part and also try to do the angle between these two things calculate the angle between these two vectors how to do this one just do the dot product of these two I told one example dot product of these two you do you will get the angle here so straight away angle is also given here so there are three questions you do as a homework that will be good thank you children